In an age when our politics too often divide us, now is the time to remember that we are all fellow citizens. We are one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you took the 10 worst presidents in the history of the United States, think of it, the 10 worst, added them up, they will not have done the damage that Biden has done. I'm only going to use the term once, Biden. I'm not going to use the name anymore, just one time. In today's spotlight, that was Donald Trump breaking his own record for the longest ever convention acceptance speech in U.S. history. The former president wrapping the RNC in Milwaukee with his one hour and 33 minute address last night. That was just five days after the assassination attempt on his life. He promised a message of unity. And while his remarks started off that way, he did eventually go off script, reviving old grievances and blasting political rivals. Let's bring in our panel, ABC News contributor and op-ed columnist for the Los Angeles Times, Elsie Granderson, ABC News contributor and former Republican congresswoman from Virginia, Barbara Comstock, and ABC News contributor and former 2016 Clinton campaign official, Amanda Renteria. Elsie, a lot of anticipation over that speech where Trump said he would take this tone of unity. He said he wouldn't mention Biden's name, and he did once or, or twice, uh, you know, did he sort of step on his own message there by going off on, on what sounded like a much more traditional Donald Trump stump speech? I don't know why we continue to characterize his speeches or his approach to governing with any sort of old school characterization of how we should do things. I mm -hmm. think by now we should all be characterizing the way that Donald Trump handles this as the usual. And when he talks about unity, that's actually being off script. The off script part is not when he goes and tells us who he is. The off script part is when he pretends to be something that he's not. And so I think we need to have a paradigm shift in the way that we cover him, the way that we talk mm -hmm. about him, because he's not someone who has proven to hold true to his word. So why do we keep pretending that we're shocked when he doesn't do it? It's a good point and one that we, the media, uh, we've seen. Uh, Republic, uh, Barbara, you know, we, we did see that Republicans at the RNC enjoyed that speech, a lot of them uniting around him. At the same time that we do see this very public division playing out in the Democratic Party, how do you see that benefiting Republicans and Trump as he kind of continues on with his campaign on the trail tomorrow? Well, this is the first time a convicted felon has ever been nominated for a party, somebody who has also been adjudicated guilty of sexual assault. There is nothing new here of Donald Trump, and LZ is exactly right. The only thing that's unusual is when he, you know, says a few nice things. Uh, so he was, you know, all kinds of lies last night, back to his election denying, um, trying to you know, attack, you know, all the usual attack lines about the cases against him. And it was all me, 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 which is why it is so upsetting that today the Biden campaign just didn't, you know, the previous section, you know, didn't just step aside, turn the page and say, we're going to step aside. We're going to put a nice new young new face here and uh, let uh, the vice president take the reins and, and have a uh, new mission here because this is a very beatable donald trump and i wish uh president biden would step aside and let donald trump because there are a lot of republicans and independents who would like to join in to beat this guy well you're not the only one we're now hearing from 36 members of Congress making that argument. Amanda, we did hear former President Trump describe in great detail the attempt on his life last night, the assassination attempt. How much do you expect that will be part of his message as he's on the campaign trail, including his first rally since then uh, out on the trail tomorrow? Well, and I, when I think the issues are hard for him to talk about and he can't help himself but really do what Trump does, which is yell and scream and lie about what's going on. I think his personal story is something he's gonna do because that's what he does. He talks about himself. Um, what's important here is that we do need to, Democrats do need to start making the contrast, show the different vision of what Democrats have, but also who Trump really is. The idea of what LB said is that there was a chance for him to be different. The fact that 
we all or people thought that he would be different is just a reminder of what we're up against. We're up against somebody who isn't going to change, who talked about being an authoritarian, who talks about undermining our democracy, who led a January 6th insurrection. And now is the time for the Democratic Party to come together to make sure that message and that contrast is out there. And we will see how, no doubt about it, we're going to continue to see that kind of division play out, though, and, and different messaging play out in the next couple of days, obviously weeks, months, till we get to November. LZ, Barbara, Amanda, thank you guys all very much.